Good evening and welcome to Evening Prayers for Wednesday evening. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. I will offer you a sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfil my vows to the Lord in the presence of all the people. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Wednesday night's psalm is Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament shows forth the work of God's hands. One day tells its tale to another and one night imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language and their voices are not heard, their sound has gone out into all lands and their message to the ends of the world. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the innocent. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold, sweeter far than honey, than honey in the comb. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Tonight's reading from 2 Samuel comes from chapter 3, verses 22 to 39. Just then the servants of David arrived with Joab from a raid, bringing much spoil with them. But Abner was not with David at Hebron, for David had dismissed him and he had gone away in peace. When Joab and all the army that was with him came, it was told Joab, Abner, son of Ner, came to the king and he has dismissed him and he has gone away in peace. Then Joab went to the king and said, What have you done? Abner came to you. Why did you dismiss him so that he got away? You know that Abner, son of Ner, came to deceive you and to learn your comings and goings and to learn all that you are doing. When Joab came out from David's presence, he sent messengers after Abner and they brought him back from the cistern of Sirah, but David did not know about it. When Abner returned to Hebron, Joab took him aside in the gateway to speak with him privately, and there he stabbed him in the stomach. So he died for shedding the blood of Asahel, Joab's brother. Afterward, when David heard of it, he said, I and my kingdom are forever guiltless before the Lord for the blood of Abner, son of Ner. May the guilt fall on the head of Joab and on all his father's house, and May the house of Joab never be without one who has a discharge or who is leprous or who holds a spindle or who falls by the sword or who lacks food. So Joab and his brother Abishai murdered Abner because he had killed the brother Asahel, their brother Asahel in the battle at Gibeon. Then David said to Joab and to all the people who are with him, tear your clothes and put on sackcloth and mourn over Abner. And King Fo David followed the Bier. They buried Abner at Hebron. The king lifted up his voice and wept at the grave of Abner, and all the people wept. The king lamented for Abner, saying, Should Abner die as a fool dies? Your hands were not bound, your feet were not fettered. As one who falls before the wicked, you have fallen. And all the people wept over him again. Then all the people came to persuade David to eat something while it was still day. But David swore, saying, So may God do to me and more, if I taste bread or anything else, before the sun goes down. All the people took notice of it, and it pleased them, just as everything that king did pleased all the people. So all the people and all Israel understood that day that the king had no part in the killing of Abner, son of Ner. And... The king said to his servants, Do you not know that a prince and a great man has fallen this day in Israel? Today I am powerless, even though anointed king. These men, the sons of Zeruah, are too violent for me. 
the Lord pay back the one who does wickedly in accordance with his wickedness. Tonight's hymn, sung by the choir of our congregation at Christ the Cornerstone in Milton Keynes, the hymn, O for a Thousand Tongues, sung to the tune Richmond. And our Gospel reading comes from St Mark, chapter 6, verses 47 to 56. When evening came, the boat was out on the sea and he was alone on the land. When he saw that they were straining at the oars against an adverse wind, he came towards them early in the morning, walking on the sea. He intended to pass them by, but when they saw him walking on the sea, they thought it was a ghost and cried out, for they all saw him and were terrified. But immediately he spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is, not I, it is I, do not be afraid. Then he got into the boat with them and the wind ceased, and they were utterly astounded, for they did not understand about the loaves, but their hearts were hardened. When they had crossed over, they came to land at Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognised him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak. And all who touched it were he. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Among the names with us tonight in worship is Doreen Ward. Doreen and I met in her lovely church, Holy Trinity Parish Church in Seghill, with whom my church as minister, Elson Avenue, worshipped regularly. And I remember a confirmation class that I hosted, that, that her vicar hosted for us in preparing folk for membership 
of the Methodist and United Reformed churches, given that we worship with the Anglicans, thought it would be good for them to have one of the lessons, one of the classes in the parish church. And I can remember my good friend and colleague, the late Father Alan Murray, addressing us as we sat in the front pews and said, will you all look up to the ceiling? And as we all looked up to the ceiling, wondering why, he said, what do you see? And of course we saw the ceiling. And he said, yes, but look, what is the ceiling formed by? The beams, he pointed out, were those of a boat, albeit, of course, an upturned boat. And Father Allen went on to share with the confirmation class that as members of the church, we are indeed climbing into the boat in which Jesus is captain. And a boat, of course, which sails sometimes in calm waters, sometimes in turbulent waters. And, to his amusement and ours, sometimes feeling more as if it is, like the ceiling at Holy Trinity, an upturned boat. I say all this because all of those lovely memories came back as I read Mark's Gospel tonight. And we see, uh, and Jesus watches with us, the disciples in the boat on the sea, and we read in St Mark's words, straining at the oars against an adverse wind. Not quite the upturned boat yet, thank goodness, but certainly their experience that day of their efforts in the boat was anything but plain sailing. They were straining at the oars and against an adverse wind. By the time St Mark wrote his Gospel, I suspect it was the experience of him and many that the church in his day certainly knew something about being the kind of boat that faced adverse wind. By no means was being part of the church then or now plain sailing. And those of us that seek to play our part in the witness and life of the church, in boating terms, I suspect feel that we're straining at the oars against an adverse wind. The good news from tonight's Gospel reading is that Jesus came towards them in that setting walking on the surface of the water. But of course, as is so often the case, not, you will understand, in any congregation that I could readily identify, but just as a general principle. Even as and when the presence of Christ is made manifest in the midst of his people called the Church, like the disciples, we conclude other. They thought it was a ghost and cried out, for seeing him they were terrified. Similarly, I've heard it said, not of course I say again in any congregation that you or I could name, but do you know what? If Jesus turned up at church meeting, parochial church council or whatever in our congregations, he'd struggle to get a word in edgeways and people wouldn't particularly warm to him. They may cry out and be terrified that the very one we say we love and serve might be evident in his church because when he does and when his voice is truly heard and responded to, things have to change. To them, Jesus said, take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Then he got into the boat with them, and the wind ceased. So similarly, friends, when we most genuinely seek to enable the voice of Christ, Christ's presence to be made manifest in our midst, then winds cease, the winds against which we seem to be straining 
with our oars. The presence of Christ, making its presence felt amongst us. Another of our friends viewing tonight is Moine Hobart, Hobart. Her tradition, the Roman Catholic Church, has a beautiful service called benediction. When the Blessed Sacrament, representing, probably with a Protestant view, we'd question that, but representing the presence of Christ in the midst of the people, framed by gold, clouded by the incense of prayer, so blessed is his presence that very often those worshipping at benediction will do so on their knees. The presence of Christ takes us to our knees and making itself manifest among us enables not plain sailing, but at least to know that God is with us in choppy waters. Amen. Our New Testament song for Wednesday is a song of faith and hope. Now that we've been justified through faith, we are at peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to that grace in which we now live, and we exult in the hope of the divine glory that is to be ours. More than this, we even exult in our present sufferings because we know that suffering is a source of endurance. Such hope is no fantasy. Through the Holy Spirit he has given us, God's love has flooded our hearts. It was while we were still helpless that at the appointed time Christ died for the wicked. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners and that is God's proof of his love towards us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Lord our God, at the ending of this day and in the darkness and silence of this night, cover us with healing and forgiveness, that we may take our rest in peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, from whom all thoughts of truth and peace proceed, Kindle, we pray, in every heart the true love of peace and guide with your pure and peaceable wisdom those who take counsel for the nations of the earth that in tranquility your kingdom may go forward till the earth is filled with the knowledge of your love through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe. To you be glory and praise for ever. For you have given us a share in the inheritance of the saints in light. In the darkness of this passing age, your saints proclaim the glory of your kingdom. Chosen as lights in the world, they surround our steps as we journey on towards that eternal city of light where they sing the triumphal song. Open our eyes to behold your glory and free our tongues to join our song with theirs. For great and wonderful are your deeds, O Lord God Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O King of the ages. To you be praise and glory, now and for ever. Amen. Let us pray for the Church. And within are the Churches represented on this screen and across our Synod and beyond. Let us pray in particular for all and any who feel that they are straining at the oars against an adverse wind. For congregations that are dispirited by the lack of ordained ministry in their midst. For congregations feeling that they do not have the capacity, the strength or the youthfulness that they feel they need for sailing in these days. For churches feeling that they are weakened by the absence of those they need. For churches struggling against the adverse wind of the setting in which they find themselves worshipping and witnessing. And ultimately for those parts of the church straining at the oars against the adverse winds of persecution, 
and suffering and martyrdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In our prayers tonight for the congregations of this East Midland Synod, we pray for the ministers, elders and members of our congregations in Lincolnshire. And in particular, the two resource areas currently seeking ministry in their vacancy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for folk, whether of faith or not, our loved ones and those we'll never meet, straining at the oars against an adverse wind. May they draw comfort from the assurance of the one who said, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Among those for whom we pray, we continue to pray with Celia for her grandson Alfie and for the members of his family. We pray with Liz for her great nephew Ryan and for her daughter Emma as they strain at the oars against an adverse wind. Similarly, we pray with Prince for Cheryl. We pray with Andy and for his dad, with him for his dad, Mick. We pray with Judith for her niece, Catherine, and her recovery from her surgery and her preparation for possible chemotherapy and radiotherapy. We pray for David Todd, the Reverend Amanda Linney, Onkatea, Pauline, Graham and Vera Maskery, Eric and Joan Allen, and for all and any for whom sailing is not plain, but adverse winds bring challenge. And we unite all these our prayers in the name of the one who breathed those words, do not be afraid. Amen. Tonight we listen to the Lord's Prayer sung for us by the choir of our church at Christ the Cornerstone, Milton Keynes. The Lord bless us with his grace and fill us with his peace. Amen.
Good night.